Welcome back everyone to The Coach Approach. It's your coach, Billy the Black Baker, and today, 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 we're gonna be going over things that are costing you your games. Five things, that's it, just five. You could get a notepad, write them down, whatever you want. But I feel these things, these, there, there could be more, don't get me wrong, right? This isn't the one stop and shop, there could be more. Um, if you would like more, make sure you get a coaching session with me, and I, I, I can help you. What, what kind of plug? That was a terrible segue to a plug. Things that might be costing you your games, okay? So if you're interested in that, if you wanna clean up your gameplay, if you wanna start winning because some of these things are why you are losing, make sure you stick around. All right, so the start of season 11 is here. I hope everybody is having a good time. If you're not, Welcome to League of Legends. If you are, you're cheating, quit doing, quit boosting. I'm just saying, you know it. You know what you do. Like I said, it's, it's cool to see you guys play. It's cool to see you guys climb. Um, this season definitely feels a lot more difficult than the other seasons, but in a good way. Players are a little bit more better than they are um, than they were before. But that's not why you're here. We're gonna talk about rank systems, right? You're here for me to discuss why you might be losing your games. So the first thing here is, if someone is doing bad, encourage them, all right? If someone's doing poor, don't flame them. That's not gonna do nothing. And this is a generic tip, you hear it all the time. Don't flame anybody. Have a positive mental, blah, blah, blah. That is difficult. When you got this one guy not listening, that is difficult, okay? I know, it's, it's a pain. How are you gonna encourage someone who just is trolling? And that, I know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a pain. Do I do it? No, I mute everybody, but that's me, okay? I know some of you guys feel like you guys need to have your chat on. So if that is how you feel, then you need to use it correctly, right? You need to make sure that you are using it to encourage, you're using it to make plays, you're using it for all that extra good stuff and not just talking about random stuff, you know? Um, not just discussing how broken a champ is, not discussing how much you need help. That doesn't matter. Nobody needs to read that. The only things you should be putting in chat are plays, you need their help with something, or you're putting it in chat that uh, you, you're encouraging them, right? Oh, uh, this, this top laner is zero and five or whatever, right? Well, don't worry, just kind of sit back and I'll come gank you. If you're a support, it could work. Mid lane, it could work. I mean, ADC, you, ain't, you better not be Roman top. Um, but for the most part, like that's what it is. Or if, if you are ADC, here, let, let me just do it for all roles, okay? All roles, this is what you can say. If you're a top lane, and your bot lane's losing, your mid lane's losing, or your jungler's losing. Here you go. So for the jungle, don't worry, when you're top side, I'll help you out. I'll come help you when you when you, when they invade. Jungler feels a little bit happy. He'll play he'll play towards top more for you. All right, mid lane. I mean, if you're a top laner, talking to the mid laner. Um. Hey, don't worry. Just let them push into you, and I'll gank. And if, if the jungler can gank too, that's a that's a three v one. We'll we'll put you back in the game. Just something simple like that. For bot lane, hey, don't worry. I'll roam down there or I'll TP down there. Just farm under tower, and I, and I'll help you. Well, bam! Look at that. That's easy. That, that got me feeling happy already. Now I'm not even in your game. For mid laners, that's the same thing for top and bot. Hey, don't worry, let them, let them push in, farm up a little bit, um, try not to get dove, and I'm on my way. Boom, junglers, same thing for all three lanes. You know, don't let them, just, just farm up. I got you, don't worry, I'll come help you, right? Now, sometimes you wanna stay away from those fed lanes, don't get me wrong, because uh, you're not strong enough to deal with those fed laners, but don't let them know that, okay? <laughs> because a little goes a long way. If you know, if they, they they know you, they know you know they are struggling, right? It's not a it's not a mystery. If this guy's getting his ass kicked, it's pretty obvious why. So, if you are the type of player to just be like, well, um, don't worry about it, I got your back. That's a real teammate, not the one saying just sit on a tower, don't do anything. Because guess what? What you type can come off as passive aggressive. Um, I was coaching, she might laugh because she's getting shouted out here. Um, I coach a 58 year old, right? And when she was when she was playing the game, she would type something. And I forgot what she typed, but she typed something. And I was like, that is toxic. She was like, what? She was like, that's not toxic. I was like, that is toxic. And uh, it's because the way that she meant it was different from how it was received. You can't really get emotions through text, right? So the best thing to do is try to make it so that it doesn't seem like what it could be interpreted as. As I said, simple things like, hey, don't worry. Is it just a good segue to say what you wanna say? Hey, I can say it in the same tone, the voice, right, right. Hey, don't worry, I'll come down, so farm, just farm under tower and I'll be there. Just farm under tower. Even saying it, 
vocally, there's still a difference between the two. So how do you think it looks in a text, right? Number two, know where everyone is before you leave lane by anything. Even if you recall, you better know it. No, I'm just kidding. That part, obviously, you go back to your tower, press B, there you go. But if you're going to go ward, if you're going to go roam, if you're going, whatever, make sure you know where all five of their teammates are. And if you want to be extra, extra cautious about it, make sure where your teammates are. Because if you do happen to walk into them, they're there to help you. Honestly, if you roam and you know the jungler's right there, like if he's on crap and you just start going into that jungle to go ward, say, hey, ping, hey. And then the jungle will go. Maybe even the bot lane will follow too. You never know. And you got a got nice little fight on blue buff. Like, little stuff like that. Use your teammates. Okay, that's a tip. I'm just saying use them. But, um, you know, make sure you know where they all are. So that way you're not walking, going to ward, and get caught. Especially when you're a support and AD carry. Sometimes you guys go ward bushes versus assassins and you just get one shot. And it ain't fair. I know. I, I feel the pain. Trust. I trust. I feel you. But it ain't. It's not their fault that you walking in different areas and you getting caught out and killed and everything like that, right? What does that got to do with, uh, what does that got to do with, with, with your team or anything like that? Oh, that Talon's so fed, he just, well, you weren't paying attention to where he was in the first place. Why did they TP? Well, you weren't paying attention to the TP cooldown. Why, the junglers, well, you weren't paying attention to where the jungler, you, you, see, you see what I'm getting at? So if you know where they all are at all times, when you go roam, ward, uh, whatever you're gonna go do, pick some fucking fly, I don't know. When you go do those things though, you're not gonna get caught, you're not gonna die. Nine times out of 10 that times that you die in landing phase is because you're not paying attention and someone just comes to get you. Um, the other one out of 10 times is when, you do when you're dope, okay? Like who could do anything about that? You could, you could, <laughs> okay, realistically, you could just back up off the tower. But once again, that's just, you're not paying attention. So it helps a lot if you just know where everybody is before you leave lane. Number three, buy your little potions. Honestly, this is really short and sweet. I don't really see people buy them. Buy the refillable. If you know your lane is going to be poke heavy, buy a damn refillable. I've done coached a lot of students. And I'm going to say about 99.9999% of my damn students, when I've met them, would buy like 18 red potions. Okay? <laughs> you, might think I'm, you might think I'm joking. I see this shit. Okay? They will buy like 18 health potions. And the sad part is they'll sell like 10 of them. So, I mean, what is the point? And then I'll see some students buy potions mid to be like, late game. Like, Brad, what you need potion for? Okay? There's one student, and if you're watching this, you know you are, that will not sell her refillable potions no matter what. I don't care if it is 50 minutes of the game. She will keep the refillable potions until she absolutely needs that spot. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't flame her too much, all right? But it's just funny. Um, but buy refillable potions. This is for you laners, obviously, not junglers. If you know your lane's gonna be hard, if you know you're gonna have to have more than three potions, your first one, and then of course the, uh, the, the other three or four you buy, just buy a refillable potions after that first back. So that way you can just constantly get your potions refilled. Supports is the same way, but you have to kind of gauge yours a little differently. I always buy refillables when I'm a melee support because I'm always just getting harassed and I'm always looking for trades. So it just depends on your lane, how you're playing that lane. But if you feel like you're going to get poked or you feel like you guys are going to be trading a lot, get refillables. It saves you a ton of gold, right? It is how much? 150 and then you can sell it back for 60, right? 150 is three potions. So you are getting gimped on one. But you can't sell that shit back. So you're out, you're out of 150. You're basically saving 10 gold then. Well, I guess, yeah. Because if you buy three, you still gimped on a potion, but you're still saving that extra 10 gold if you couldn't, you know, sell that back. So, um, I hate math, by the way. Just just throwing that out there. So, yeah, you're saving yourself money just by getting refillable potions, even if you're not going to get three, you're getting two, and you sell that junk back, and then boom, you made 10 extra gold that you would have just spent on another a third refillable potion. Buy refill, I mean, thought red potion. Buy refillable potions, you guys. It, it is huge. I'm not lying. I do it all the time. It saves you so much money. It's it's insane. Number four, be at almost 75% health is what I usually say. 75. If you want to be nice, 80. 80% 80 HP or full HP most of the landing phase, if not all. A lot of times you guys complain about dying. A lot of times you complain about getting ganked. A lot of times you guys complain about getting dove. A lot of times you guys complain about chance being broken. Okay, that last one's just me. 
it's because you're damn near out of HP, okay? You can't be at 30% HP and complain about being dove. You can't be overextended, do a trade, be at 50 HP, complain about being ganked. The only time where it's acceptable to be dove and you don't see them is if you just get dove that full HP. What are you gonna do? If that's the case and they're coming from all different angles, you just kind of dead, right? That's what you usually see in high elo. Uh, but for the most part, being, look, just look at that, look at the Wukong, right? Just right there, I wouldn't even watch him. Look at him, his HP was damn near uh, at like 50, and he dies for it. I died for it because I thought Fizz was coming, but that doesn't matter. He was the low on HP. He could have helped a lot more if he wasn't. That was just one example, right? Imagine every single game you've died. How many times were you at full HP in the laning phase? Imagine every time you were ganked. How many times were you at full HP in the laning phase? Imagine you being dove. How many times were you at full HP? If your butt looks juicy, they gonna come for the doocy. No, I'm sorry, that, let's move on. Number five, don't go for any trades if you aren't comfortable with the laner. This thing is actually pretty interesting. So what I've noticed is a lot of players, even if they don't know what the champion does, will still try to trade with them. Even if they know they lose lane, they'll still try to trade with, trade with them. It is okay to sit there. Don't feel like you're getting bullied. You are getting bullied, but that's just how it works, right? You're not strong enough to deal with it. How many movies have you seen where there was a kid getting bullied at school all the time and they can't do nothing about it? They try, they get smacked down. But then they get big brother or they train themselves and the bully gets his butt kicked, right? You need to be the big brother or you need to get trained and, and beat his ass. Like, you gotta be later. If a protective is in your lane and you're playing, I don't know, Yasuo, you're not fighting that guy. It's just not happening until you get stronger or until Big Brother Juggler comes and helps you out. Don't be that guy to just trade and trade and trade and just die. Especially when you do die, there's something that kicks in every human system that plays this game. I don't even care if you're high elo. Okay, if you're high elo, you got more discipline so it doesn't happen too much. Um, but you die and you try to fight him over and over because, oh, I could kill him. It was so close. And you do it again. Oh, it was so close. I could kill him. It, it was just close. And you do it again. Oh, no. Oh, and you do it again, and now you're not even close anymore, and you're 0-4, thanks you, uh, th the team thanks you, and now we have to deal with a 4-0 or for Renekton, because you wanted to keep fighting him because it was so close. Instead of just waiting for someone to help you. It is a hard lane. Nobody's gonna be mad at you. It's 8 Tekken, right? Even in Tekken, there's tears, but like, it's not like that. Like, you can get put in a very bad lane. It happens. Your teammates aren't feeders. Your teammates aren't um, saying, hey, I wake up today to queue and just make your game miserable. No, these lanes are hard sometimes. I know you have hard lanes. Sometimes, I, most of the time when I coach students, they don't even know they have hard lanes. I'm like, so what are your, probably your struggling matchups? More than half of them are like, uh, I don't really have any, I can deal with all of them. Bullshit, right? There's no way. The game's not designed for you to be able to deal with all matchups at all times unless you're a super, super meta pick, and in which case, there are very few counters, but there still are counters. That's just how champions are designed. Then the other small portion is like, yeah, this champ, this champ, this champ, this champ, this champ, there's some champs that are just really difficult. And so, A, if you understand your lane is difficult, don't trade, chill, wait for your jungler, wait till you get stronger, you know how it pans out. If you're unfamiliar with the champion, don't trade at all, because there's really no reason to. Just sit there, farm, wait for ganks. And when you're strong enough, You'll know you're strong, because if it's your champion that you always play, you'll know you're strong enough. And then proceed to um to proceed to beat them. Right? Same thing for when it's your teammates. Kind of revisiting the encouragement part. Lanes are hard. Don't get mad at them for feeding. They're not really doing it on purpose. It's just hard. The lower elo you go, the harder it is to know that you're not supposed to be winning this lane. High elo you go, they're gonna do the same thing, but they might only die once or twice and be like, alright, stop, I'll stop. Okay? So these are the five things that I think may be costing your game. Maybe only one of them is costing your game. Maybe all of them is costing your game. Let me know in the comments below which one is probably the one that is costing your game the most for you. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. If you guys would like free bot reviews, make sure you join my Discord. I'm going to be doing a raffle this week for a free coaching. Every single month there's going to be a raffle for a free coaching. Make sure you get into my Discord for that. Also, if you guys would like coaching join me, or visit my website, there's coaching, there's VODs. And I think I'm going to add something else to it too. Not sure yet, but you guys can see kind of the coaching regimen and uh, things like that on that particular site. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. 
Um, you know what I always say? Thank you for approaching this like a coach. Thank you.